I've got uh, something to show you. It's a battered, tattered, faded, frayed photograph. It's taken over a hundred years ago and it comes from the old country, Poland, the town of Piotrkov Trybunalski. And there's a fellow in this photo, a straight-backed, stiff-necked, stone-faced fellow with a big black round cap and a big black square-cut beard and a big buttoned-up top coat. This fellow's name is Yisroel Zimbabwe, and I'm named after him. Yeah, I know. I'm Russell. He's Yisrael. Not a perfect match, but as you'll hear in our family, names tend to shape shift as circumstances change. Anyway, I'm named after Yisrael Tsimbeknov because Yisrael Tsimbeknov is my great grandfather. And standing behind Yisrael and my great grandmother, Frimidla Tsimbeknov, is their firstborn son, Great Uncle Bear. Now, when the First World War broke out, Great Uncle was really still just a boy, but despite being barely a man, Bear was required to do his bit, and they marched him off with a broomstick over his shoulder. There weren't enough guns to go around to help repel the invaders from the east, the Russians. And on the field, as the Russians commenced their advance, Bear did his bit by concealing himself in a conveniently located haystack until the last Russian Russian had rushed past. <laughs> a coward? Not a bit. I hope I've inherited a bit of the Tsimbeknov courage, the courage to defy one sergeant, a bit of the Tsimbeknov compassion, the compassion to save a stranger from the east, the burden of anxiety that's begotten by burying a bayonet in the breast of an unknown, innocent child. After an inordinate period, when the sounds of fighting had ebbed away, Bear tentatively emerged from his haystack to discover, to his surprise, that the Russians had been required to retreat and had returned to the east from whence they had come. So Bear rejoined his regiment and together, in due course, they were all paraded on the great square of the great city of Warsaw, the great city of Warsaw, before none other than the legendary liberator of Poland itself, Marshal Pilsudski. And Great Uncle Bear's heart swelled with pride as Marshal Pilsudski pinned the chest of Private Zimbabwe, not with a bayonet, but with a medal. <laughs> How I would have loved to have heard that tale. And all the tales of the Martin Zimbabwe's from Great Uncle Bear himself. I might have got to do so. I might even have got to meet Great Uncle Bear, all his brothers, his sisters, their wives and husbands, their children, my cousins. 
the ganzen Mishpocha, the whole family. But for the advent of the next world war and its wave of invaders, the invaders from the West, whose troopers stormed right across the old country and systematically, relentlessly, remorselessly, snuffed out the lives of Bear, of Frimitla, of Yisrael, and of all but a tiny handful of their Gansa Mishloch. This time, there were nowhere near enough haystacks to go around. I'm not a lot like Yisroel Simiknov. I haven't got a big black hat, I haven't got a big black beard, I haven't got a big buttoned up top coat. I only speak a few orphaned words of his mama loshi, his mother tongue, that mellifluous, melodious, idiosyncratic, idiomatic, unlucky language, Yiddish. I've never even been to the old country. Yisrael Tzimbeknoff's world was annihilated. And I've no wish to be buried in the cinders of the Tzimbeknoff. Yisrael Tzibaknov was an unlucky man, unlike me. But on a feast day, a feast day such as Purim, Pesach, or Sukkot, or Simchas Torah, or the day when Bear made his bar mitzvah, or the day when Bear's younger sister, Reisela, little Rose, Reisela, my grandmother, I named after her too. The day when Reisela marries the man from Vashava, the man from Warsaw, Mordechai Goldflam. I, Russell Goldflam, also carry his name. On feast days such as these, Yisrael Tsipiknov unbuttons his top coat and he dances. And the music he dances to is the music we play. <laughs> <laughs>